it's just, I've rewritten the rest. Yeah, there's just, just, there's just as we've discovered, there's too much information to do everything in one place. That's why we've given you the whole pack of notes this space, so that you can read up and, and do a little bit of reading on your own um, when you go home. So this is James, James Fox Robinson. The, um, what's your official title? My official title is, is Prayer and Spirituality and Neighbourhood. Yeah. So, um, hence, if anybody knows what that means, do let me know. So, hence the reason why Tina asked James to lead this session, Prayer on Mission. I thought Jesus was the enabler. Yes. Where is Conscious? We are one of the same. Pray for James and pray for all, and then I'll lead James to it. And we'll have so, Father, we thank you for James. We thank you for the passion he has for you and for the work he is doing for you. Father, as he comes and speaks to us tonight, we pray you bring clarity of heart and mind to all that he says. And Father, we pray that you will open our hearts and minds to receive the words that he brings to us tonight. Father, we know that we cannot do this without you. And so we pray that your spirit is here tonight in power, enabling us to do all that you want us to do and hear this evening. Be with us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Um, so I'm going to start the stopwatch, which I will then basically completely ignore, but um, it's there, <laughs> you know. Uh, so, yeah, prayer and spirituality enabler for the diocese, uh, which means I spend a lot of my time um, running around to various deanery synod meetings and chapter meetings and uh, quiet days and things uh, to encourage people to pray, to think about how they do that and why they do that, um, and uh, encouraging people <coughs> to use prayer as a form of mission um, out in the community um, and also to think about uh, spirituality which within the Church of England is an incredibly broad uh, subject um, so uh, if you have any questions that I can't answer what I say is I will go away and come up with an answer and email you with it um, so do ask uh, whatever you want to ask but I don't promise to have the answer immediately um, so uh, I am a pioneer uh, at heart, um, I worked for a parish church up in Durham um, 10 years ago, um, setting up uh, Fresh Expressions for them, uh, kind of family based um, Fresh Expressions at the time, um, kind of a few years after kind of pioneering and Fresh Expressions became a thing. Um, so as with all people that are in youth work or church work, um, you Kind of hit a ceiling on income if nothing else um, and you go, go to the dark side and start working in the office um, so that's where i am now um, does anybody know the abbey in devon so i was their creative arts director for a couple of years um, i've uh, done quite a lot of work in schools and theatre is my other passion um, uh, my, my first degree was uh, interior architecture, so I went into set and lighting design. Um, so I now use all of those skills helping churches put prayer spaces into their buildings. Um, so there we go, a little bit about me. Um, I'm studying Masters with Church Mission Society, so that has a kind of missional lens on it. It's very kind of outward looking, um, which is great. Um, and I'm particularly interested in the role that monastic community um, is playing in the missional life of the church. That seems to be a kind of growing thing. Um, lots of new communities um, emerging all over the place. Um, so that's kind of what I'm interested in. Uh, but um, just so I can get an idea of where people are at, who is already involved in some form of fresh expression? Who's looking at being involved in some form of fresh expression? The group is. Yes. Perfect. Um, who's here because their vicar told them they should be? So, just to give you a quick background, Jim. Thank you. There's, I could have asked this earlier, really. Yeah, there's a group called Men United. There's four different places where they do Men yeah. United, Midsummer, Norton, and Radstock being yeah. one of them. So, this is a Men United group oh, cool. who okay. have done bits and pieces yeah, yeah. and now are generally focusing on who let the dads out yeah. and how they can maybe move that further forward okay. and all other stuff in the future. That gives me a better idea. Depending on where they're being led. Cool. Okay. Um, so we're going to focus on prayer, we're going to look at two different streams really, what it means for you as leaders to be praying kind of at every stage of this journey and the importance of that, but then also within who let the dads out or whatever 
you're doing, how prayer fits within that model of church. Um, so it's kind of two streams going on. Um, so, yeah, as we've said, um, I'm kind of, firstly, on your notes, absolutely no idea what potpourri has to do with prayer. So I've basically changed all of the visuals from what you've got on your handout. Um, because I was slightly confused by those. <laughs> and uh, the bits of the script I am using, I've pretty much rewritten. But I will try and tell you loosely where we are in your notes. Um, there are some bits that will be scripted, but it's mostly on videos. Okay, but if you get lost, just shout. Um, so by way of introduction, prayer is um, fundamental to leading any sort of form of church. It's fundamental to us as Christians. Um, and the metaphor that they use in the notes is that prayer is like breathing. In a sense, as Christians, to pray is to breathe. It's how we spiritually breathe. Prayer is how we become connected with God. More specifically, prayer is the language and grammar or syntax of our relationship with God. So reflecting that inherent relationship of the Trinity, that kind of interconnectedness um, of the three parts of God. So prayer is not so much a duty or required element of being a follower of Christ, but it should be a joy. It should be a way of being and doing life. So it's about being in the presence of God. Um, I am in the middle of becoming a third order Franciscan, and joy is one of the three principles of the Franciscans. Um, so working towards that prayer really kind of opens up joy in your life. I don't know how much you have found that, but for me, um, prayer has been something that's really opened up joy for me. Um, You've got a little quote that says, you don't teach prayer, you teach God, and then people want to pray. Um, I realise this is being filmed, so I will be gentle. I am not a big fan of that quote, and here is why. I think in today's culture, people don't want to be taught. I think people want to experience things. I think as leaders of whatever model of church you're working in, we need to be creating spaces for people to explore spirituality. Um, and actually, I think that prayer can be a starting point. I think we have a very spiritually aware society that we're working in. Um, and if you talk to people about where they find their peace, for example, the outcome of that conversation is often, well, I find peace because I'm a, I'm a prayer. Um, so I think prayer can be a starting point. Um, so, you know, feel free to disagree, feel free to um, highlight that if you like it. Otherwise, my suggestion is put a line through it and go and read some Merton or Richard Raw. Uh, there you are. So, um, prayer is critical to any Christian endeavour and starting or continuing or developing a form of church uh, is definitely you know, there's no exceptions that prayer is really important. Um, so one could argue that because of the missional nature of fresh expressions, uh, the need for following God's lead, or our dependence on God for opening the doors, um, both physical, but people's hearts uh, also, uh, the need for grace and wisdom in every area, uh, the need for defence, and for many other reasons, to cure, to secure a foundation of prayer will make the difference between whether your group works or not. That's the kind of basis of what all the material today uh, is written on. Um, so yeah, just to reiterate, so how do you pray for what you're doing as leaders, but how do you pray within that group as well? Are the kind of two things we're looking at. Everyone happy so far? Yes. Mm -hmm. Lots of nods, marvellous. Um, so we're going to begin with uh, a devotional, and I'm going to play a video um, that has this narrated. So the script is in your notes, um, but there's images and it will be narrated as well. It is very wordy, 
but I think that is because they needed to try and encapsulate a lot of different aspects of what prayer is. Um, so if something kind of resonates with you and you don't listen to the rest, that is absolutely fine. You've got that. <coughs> um, so I think what I want to try and encourage you to do is to you know, relax and try and engage with the next few minutes emotionally as well as intellectually. Um, you know, what does the message mean to you? What does it, what resonates for you in what is being said about prayer um, in this video? So uh, let's just take a moment to um, be still and then I'll, I'll play the video. from God for expressing and deepening relationship with Him. Without it, we die inside. We're cut off from our source of life and our souls start to shrivel. This gift is permission and means to communicate and commune with the Creator of all things, the Redeemer of our souls, the lover of all mankind, the King of Heaven. In prayer, we speak and listen, ask and receive, a quiet or shout, pray words or in silence, focus on the needs of others or our own situation, use what's written or respond in our own words, use our mother tongue or the tongues of men and angels. We can sing or say our prayer, pray wordlessly or in groans too deep for words. We can dance out our prayer, draw it, paint it, write it down. Write it in the sound or encapsulate it in the flame of a candle. In prayer, we approach the God who loves us and who draws us nearer. We acknowledge our dependence upon Him, our desire to hear Him, to give thanks to Him, to pray our confession or your mess up, and to receive again the joy of forgiveness. Prayer can be a season of devotion or a three second request for help. It can be impregnated with intense feeling or a cerebral and passionless event. And it can be on our own or with others. <coughs> Prayer can be inspired by nature or beauty or by desperation and suffering. Prayer can be inspired by our own joys, needs or sorrows or the difficulties and heartaches of others. Prayer like worship is a way of life if not an occasional foray into a spiritual realm. And seeking to see vision fulfilled without prayer is like going to war with no strategy, no map, no armour, no weapons, and no communication with headquarters. But of more importance is that seeking to see vision fulfilled without prayer is to seek effect above relationship. Closeness to him is what he desires us most. It's what Jesus came and died for to restore. Seek his face before his hand. Seek the giver before the gift. In our love for him and his for us lies the source of the power of the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom is within us. And only to the extent it has come in us will the kingdom come through us. The kingdom of God in us is measured by our submission to the king. Our love for the king our likeness to the King, our relationship with the King, our communication with the King, our life of prayer. In prayer we align ourselves to the will of heaven and pull away from the gravity of our own desires, our self-centeredness and our perspective. In prayer, God invites us to sit beside Him in heavenly realms and gain His perspective share his heart and commit ourselves to the accomplishment of his will. In 
prayer we can ask or groan or plead or wrestle or agree for his will to be established, for his kingdom to come on the earth, including in our hearts, our territory, our realm of responsibility, our lives, our family and our churches. We pray on our own and we pray with those who share our life. We pray as one of the two or three gathered together in his name and we pray as one of the thousand gathered together to worship the King, to cry to heaven, to plead for the nation or for the future of our children. To pray is to live and to breathe and to allow him to be our all in all. Then, as we obey in prayer, we see our dreams unfold, his love made known, his kingdom established, the captive set free, addictions broken, light come in the darkness, and the lost found. And as we pray, heaven comes upon the earth. last paragraph of that is a real rally cry as to why you're all here. We're going to take uh, just a, a minute of silence, that, that's, there's a lot packed in there, so take a minute, read back through if you wish, what resonated with you, what stuck out to you, what felt important to you, we'll just take a minute and then people can feed back to the group uh, if you want to. to share any thoughts, anything you felt important? Yeah. Um, what came across there is, is what I feel is really important about prayer is that there's no set format. There's complete freedom. Um, and I don't like it when people uh, sort of foist formulas onto you, mm. you know? I think that's but, um, yeah, the freedom of expression, you know, mm. the way you express that. Mm. Yeah. There was two phrases, I, can't, I haven't got them word for word, but one was to seek his face before his hand, mm. and the other was to, to receive... Speak up! Sorry, to receive, uh, to, to seek his face before mm. his hand, and the second phrase that sort of follows that same spirit is to receive him before you can give. Mm. So it's about being a conduit. You know, you can't give what you haven't got. You know? mm. um. I think that kind of echoes the two parts of this evening in terms of, you know, part of this is about you as leaders before you try and embed prayer into something you're doing. You kind of need to get it as a, as a group. <coughs> Anything else anybody wanted to share? Mm. 
Well, one, one thing uh, in the <coughs> it says prayers like worship in, in, is a way of life, not only occasional for it. Mm. Seeking, mm. seeking to see vision fulfilled without prayer is like going to war with no strategy, mm. no map, mm. no armor. Yeah. No strategy, no map, surely they come from the communication bit, though. Mm. <laughs> so uh, th that's it sort of stuck out at me a little bit. Um, I think the bit that resonated with me was the fact that we operate from a place of being loved and we move out knowing that we're loved and supported. And the, or the origin of the word mission is about being sent. It's, you know, you have to start somewhere actually in a place mm -hmm. of love and acceptance and, and prayer before being sent. And um, we don't always remember that. Yeah. Any last comments before we move on? Just a thought. <clears throat> I read this a um, couple of times through actually, and uh, the way she starts all about the breathing and what you said initially, like, you know, really now, uh, this praying is like, not having breath of anything, mm -hmm. like, you know, and I know the Holy Spirit is often portrayed as like the breath of the Spirit and all that. We <coughs> haven't got that relationship and that ongoing breathing of the Spirit in and out, in and out, in and out. Um, we're not going to go forward very far in anything, like as a group or as a person, uh, because uh, we're not breathing. Mm -hmm. And as you said, and as you said, we'll shrivel up and die, um, mm -hmm. pretty much. And uh, that's pretty dramatic, but it's, it's true. It is what it is. <laughs> so, yeah. I think breath, you know, yeah. prayer is breath, or the spirit is breath, yeah. is a really exciting metaphor for me. Mm -hmm. um, it comes up time and time and time again throughout the Bible. You know, right at the beginning, God breathes life yeah. Uh, yeah. into Adam. Um, <coughs> I was having a conversation not that long ago with a, a fresh expression that's on its way out. Um, and they were asking how, you know, what do we pray at this point? And I was like, well, if you, you know, they had prayed about the breath of God at the beginning. And I said, have you continued praying about that metaphor through the process? And they were like, yeah. And I was like, well, why have you given up praying about that metaphor now? And I sent them straight to Ezekiel. It's like, you know, you've got this valley full of dry bones. Mm -hmm. And what does God do? Breathe. Breathes, mm -hmm. you know, and it's still all back to life. Um, I think it's an amazing metaphor. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes it seems like people underestimate mm. the um, participation of God, and, and and I wonder sometimes when they're doing stuff, how much of it is of their idea, you know, and how much of it is because they've consulted God. Yeah. And the only way, let's face it, you can consult God is through prayer. You it's know? very, it's so very easy for us to tell God how we're going to let let Him work. Sometimes. To try and start a work without praying into it first is just ludicrous. You guys are always, you're on a winner already. <laughs> Perfect. Um, we're going to move on to a Bible study. Um, and uh, this is a passage uh, from um, Colossians. So, Paul, um, who considered prayer to be an essential part of what the church is and how it works. Um, and there's kind of two main uh, things within the reading about being watchful and about being thankful. Um, something I find when I'm asked to do a Bible study uh, is that it's very easy to go to a version that we're used to and then to either hit the commentaries or go straight to Google. Um, something I find a really useful creative help to me is to read the passage in a few different versions to see just, you know, what's the differences in language, what's the differences in nuance that different translators have come up with. So I have got copies of this passage on your tables in six different versions. Um, so if that's something you think would help you, um, each version is on a different colour, so you can spread those around. Um, so Colossians 4, uh, 2 to 18. Uh, which in your notes they've called devote yourselves to prayer. What I'd like to suggest is that you take 15 minutes to just read, <coughs> read through as many of those as you want and to inwardly digest. Think about what you can draw out of that passage in terms of being watchful and thankful. Then I'm just going to do the, the last section of the notes on here. Um, 
there are a lot of notes, but it felt to me like you were grown-ups and you could probably do it. Um, so, uh, yeah, 15 minutes or so um, to work through that. Use the notes if you wish. Um, and then there's, there's an exercise at the end that's slightly different. But there we go. So 15 minutes, see what you get out of that pattern. So there's quite a lot, again, packed into those verses, and you may want to you know, take those sheets away and have another look uh, at a later point um, in your journey. Um, I just wanted to cover the last bit of the notes here, um, where it talks about, so while we're being watchful and thankful, uh, what should we be praying? And uh, so there's three points that they make here. One is that we can pray that God would open the doors so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ. I love that phrase. Um, you don't know what doors God will open, but pray that he does. Um, and in this, you know, this in a sense is kind of part of your research. It's part of that listening to your community, finding out what's going on. Um, you know, kind of engaging with the community that you're seeking to serve. Um, and Luke 10 talks about, you know, go to where the people are receptive, go to where people want you to be around. Um, so, you know, if that's that's great. Um, but, you know, be aware, don't, you know, don't necessarily go into it with a set idea of where you're heading. You know, when you start the journey or continue the journey, develop the journey, um, you know, have one ear on God and one ear on your community. Uh, so the second thing is that those who bear the message, you guys would be able to do so clearly, um, you know, using language like I would uh, manifest it as it behoves me, uh, may not be appropriate for the community in which you work. Um, uh, but also, <laughs> your actions speak, you know, as loud, if not louder, than your words. So, you know, the challenge here for you as leaders is to make sure your lives look like what you're saying. Um, uh, and they've got they've got a little um, quote here from Leslie Newbegin, uh, and the Gospel in a Pluralist Society is a brilliant book, but it was written in 1989, um, and these notes were written a few years ago now, and I would say, actually, since the, this course was put together, there has been a monumental cultural shift. Facebook didn't exist 15 years ago, so if you think that kind of fresh expressions were kind of starting, pioneering was kind of beginning, before we even had social media. So there is, yeah, there is just a monumental change in how people communicate, in how we digest information um, so I think what I want to say is that there are quite a lot of newer books that might speak into your process um, I meant to bring some and I didn't um, but I can I can send you out a list um, of kind of slightly newer uh, books on mission because um, I think yeah we are dealing with a very different culture to when some of this was written um, and the third point is, um, we should pray that those we are concerned for will stand firm in um, the will of God and mature uh, and you know assured in God's love. Um, and that's something that I don't think has changed. I think that was a good idea hundreds of years ago, and I think that will continue to be a good idea for hundreds of years to come. Um, so you know, as we've as we've said, there is an infinite number of ways to pray. Um, and you know we can we can wrestle with God in prayer if something's not quite going the way we want it to, um, or you know we can just sit in silence and, and breathe. Um, and I think that's one of the the great joys of kind of Christian prayer. Um, you know, there's there is many ways we can do it. Um, so yeah, but whilst you're watching. Uh, what's going on in your community and being thankful for what God is doing. Um, you know, make sure that you are kind of grounded in in prayer. Uh, right, so we're... Um, and make sure you've got someone like uh, Epaphras in your group, because yeah. it sounds to me like he's a bit of an intercessory 
Yeah. Right. <laughs> and I think that's the yeah, uh, that's kind of where the wrestling comes from. I think he was that person. Um, Brilliant. Uh, we're only nine and a half minutes behind my schedule, so well done, everybody. Um, so we're going to do a quick uh, exercise about your group specifically. So um, we want to answer the question: What would being devoted to prayer look like for your team? So um, are you one team? Yes. All working towards the same thing. Great. Um, in which case, you can discuss it around your tables, and then we'll share. Um, so come up with um, some kind of concrete, practical ideas for what being devoted in prayer might look like for you as a team. <coughs> Don't worry too much about that last question, because I think you could probably come back to that kind of in your own time. So what are some practical ways that you as a team could become or develop I'm glad you didn't answer. It's all good. So, part three of the CV, we're going to look at some stories, <coughs> practice, and principles and models. So, we're going to take an example of a fresh expression and uh, we're going to watch another video um, and we'll try and draw out maybe some of what you've been talking about from an example. Um, but, uh, Am I right in thinking that this isn't necessarily a brand new piece of work? Are you kind of developing something? Developing it's something. in development. Yeah, okay. Um, as we go along. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so, uh, so kind of just before listening to the story, um, this kind of gives you a sort of outline um, of what this section of the evening is talking about. So, kind of in every aspect of the birth and life of a fresh expression of church, a church plant, or frankly, an established church, um, prayer should be non-negotiable as a foundational element of all we do. Um, often easier said than done, granted, but it is important. Um, and all the main features of kind of starting a new work or developing work need to be grounded in <coughs> prayer. So they've uh, given us a kind of slightly helpful list. So while you're listening for missional opportunities, you need to be praying about those opportunities. While you're receiving vision and call, while you're researching within your community, it sounds like you're doing, you know, you've kind of got some ideas there, which is great. As you're developing the team, do you get together and purposefully pray for one another? Not just the work, do you pray for each other? Uh, you know, are you praying about those meetings that you're going to have, getting permission to do what you want to do, because it's the Church of England, and uh, most of the time you need to be asking somebody. <laughs> are you praying about how you're building community? Are you praying about how you can lovingly serve that community? Are you praying about what evangelism might look like to the people you're working with? And again, I think what evangelism is and how it looks has probably changed a great deal in the last 15 years and we don't have time really to talk about that but again some great books um you know how do you handle opposition do you you know do you kind of naturally run or do you naturally start praying and are you praying about how your maturing disciples you know, and that, that comes down to individuals with individual lives and individual journeys, um, individual faith, you know, individual ideas about spirituality. Prayer, I think, is incredibly important when you're bringing together groups of quite individual people. Um, this group's made up of ten churches. Yeah. T ten so even as a team... And every denomination You start is. getting that. Yeah. You get that sense of the, the need... Um, for prayer. So, um, you know, that list of things will only happen um, kind of as God intends if you've got a culture and practice of prayer. Um, so we're going to watch a video about um, a fresh expression uh, and they're going to read a few notes about it. Um, and we'll see, yeah, we'll see what the time we're at.
for that. into that area of Lincoln in the summer of 2003. Um, they had some previous experience, they'd been involved with the Eden Project uh, in Manchester. Um, but the way they started was to move into that space and to pray for people. Before they even got to know their neighbours, they were praying for everybody. So the following spring, they began to meet and pray with two other couples 
who kind of had a heart for their area. Um, uh, one from their church and uh, one from a different church. Um, and that summer they began to meet as a small group um, to prepare for a social action project, um, which was a festival that was going to happen in the August. And they got together because they were all together praying about that event. So you can see a theme occurring here. Uh, so in the intervening time, there were lots of social activities, inviting neighbours for meals uh, and parties. Um, and those people and those events became um, what they would pray about as a team. Um, so the wider church became involved with kind of leaflet dropping about the different things. Um, but the wider church also prayed. And there's, there's, there's a lesson here in how we communicate what we do um, to everybody else. Because it's really important that they are praying to. And so following that festival, uh, one teenager became uh, a Christian and joined the small group. So at that point, you've got something that's not just Christians praying for each other. Um, so uh, this was uh, a young lady who was addicted to heroin, needed a lot of care. And then a young man in his 20s came to faith um, in the October and joined them as well. Um, and that's when what they called threshold uh, started to grow. Um, so prayer activity since then um, has included uh, six separate weeks of prayer and fasting. Um, and one of those was for 40 days. So they do that particularly at the beginning of each year to kind of seek new vision for what they're doing uh, and to pray for their community. Um, and they have kind of topics prepared in advance. So topics that are important to their community, so poverty or drugs or homelessness or whatever, they'll take something specific and they will pray about that. Um, so they usually follow those weeks of prayer by having some sort of 24-7 prayer uh, event, a uh, kind of cele a celebration, something that they can invite a wider group to, but still around prayer. Um, and again, that is a way of inviting the wider church, other churches, whoever, into something that you're doing. Um, uh, they started a prayer newsletter, um, prayer walking on Sundays. Uh, they've been praying with other churches for two years. Um, and the leaders get together um, and pray before events like carols in the park. Um, and they've developed something called a prayer shield, which was uh, around who have you got kind of intercessing on your behalf. If you're on the front line of doing mission with people in your community, who is praying for you? Um, and that's got various different titles, various ways that they talk about that in their notes. Um, and then they developed a culture of prayer in small groups. Um, so prayer is a part of the normal activities of their small group life. So it may be worth thinking about um, how you're going to embed prayer, I would suggest from quite early, um, with the people you're working with. It's not always easy to work that out. Um, but one of, the, one of the issues that lots of Fresh Expression leaders have is when do we start doing things during the process? You know, when do we start baptising people? When do we start sharing bread and wine? When do we start doing things? For me, if you wait on prayer, you're going to be scuppered, to be honest. Um, so I would start prayer for and with the people very early on. That's my suggestion. Um, so I think it's got this at the bottom of your notes. The first girl that came to faith went back to her lifestyle of addiction, became pregnant and moved to the other side of town. The first young man committed suicide over an issue of unrequited love. There will be hiccups. There will be hard relationships. There will be things that don't work out. And yet God is still at work there. The community is growing. Um, and it goes on to talk about numbers which don't interest me in the slightest because I don't think that is what church is about. Um, church commissioners think differently. Um, <laughs> the bottom of this example in your notes says prayer is vital. Um, and that I totally agree with. Um, so, uh, going back to where we are in the notes. Um, I don't think we will do this now. Um, 
because you're one group, I think you can probably do this at different points. Um, but it's worth thinking about, within that example, you know, what aspects of the development were clearly linked with prayer, I think probably all of them is the answer. Um, what principles for leaders and teams can you identify? So from that case study, what are you going to take away as a team as important principles? Um, which models or ways of praying resonated with you? Um, and that, that story is in your notes. So you can go back to that and think actually what, you know, was it the walking around my community praying that resonated or was it the trying to pray with people or whatever? Um, and that does not have to be the same for, for each of you. You, know, you don't have to decide how you're going to pray um, as a group. You can you know, pray in the way that God needs you to pray. Um, but I think you can continue to answer some of those another time, because if we move on, we'll only be three minutes behind. Uh, so that's good. Um, so I've got some principles for you as leaders, for teams, um, because the prayer life of the leader is crucial. We've mentioned this already. Um, so a leader's prayer life is not just as a model to other people. It's not just about saying, I'm doing what I'm saying you should do. Um, but it's crucial to kind of maintain a level of holiness of life in your personal walk with God. It's important to listen to God and receive guidance for your project. It's important to understand keys to engaging with the target community. Um, so prayer will, you know, God can talk back as well. Um, you know, you can gain an understanding about your community through talking to God about it. Um, you can intercede um, for individual people and for the community um, that the team is seeking to serve. Uh, and you can pray for the care and protection of other leaders and team members, um, which I've mentioned. Uh, so the prayer life of the team is also important. Um, the team's prayer life is important for the reasons above, um, but to model a praying heart to the community that is being formed. Um, as a team, you keep focused on God um, as you love God and each other. Um, so that the community will take that same likeness. As you are being Christ-like, if that is what people are seeing, that is what they will become. Um, so a healthy team prayer life will also keep your corporate spiritual life um, you know, going, um, keeping connected to God, um, who's the source of life. Uh, so it says in the notes, you should consider maintaining both a regular discipline or rhythm of prayer and varied approach with particular prayer seasons. So I'd say you probably need to do that as an individual, um, but also as a team. Um, so to this, you should add regular rest, fellowship and input. Um, so how are you feeding yourselves while you're trying to give to your community? We, you know, we all know we need to do it. It's sometimes easy to forget. Um, so encourage the team to be creative in prayer, to be specific in request, to celebrate answers, and to tell stories with thanksgiving. So you, you might want to go away and think about how you do those things. Um, you know, how do you creatively pray for one another and your community? Um, are you being specific in the requests that you're asking God about? Um, how are you celebrating answers to prayer? Are you sharing those? Is there a system for that? Um, how are you telling the stories um, and being thankful? Okay, um, so just off the back of that then, what are some contemporary models of prayer that you guys can engage with? Um, you know, some of these are more modern and contemporary, some of these have roots that go back thousands of years um, and are about kind of uh, Monastic rhythm. Uh, so rhythms and rules, um, there is a difference. Um, if you're interested in the difference, uh, please do join us for the diocesan monasticism hub, uh, which I've set up. Um, 
so the next meeting uh, is in Wales on the 29th of October, and we are looking at rhythm and rule, um, if you're interested in that. Uh, the difference is that um, you take vows to a rule of life, so that's your kind of monks and nuns, um, uh, or, or me, as a third order Franciscan. Um, rhythm is kind of not quite so rigorous and potentially has less guilt attached. Um, uh, and that's just about kind of agreeing to a regular pattern of prayer, whatever that looks like for you. Um, and it's worth considering that, again, as individuals, but what is your rhythm of prayer as a leadership team? You know, how often are you getting together with the purpose of praying? Um, so, uh, walking through the rest. So, um, prayer walking or running or cycling or whatever, kind of, if you attach praying to an activity, you will do more of it. Um, when I was a youth worker, I used to say to the kids, I have attached prayer to sleep. I get eight full hours of prayer uh, every day, um, uh, which I used to think was hilarious. Um, but now I've got children, so I don't get eight hours of sleep. <laughs> but there we are. Um, but yes, during your day, you know, as you're brushing your teeth, that's at least four minutes a day that you could be praying for somebody. Um, so, uh, pilgrimage, um, again, there's kind of been a, a resurgence of, of pilgrimage, um, you know, not just to significant spiritual places, but what would a pilgrimage look like around your deanery, around the community in which you are trying to work with? Um, and there's lots actually, you know, you can start inviting people. If people see you do that on a monthly basis and you do the same route, people will start asking you why they're seeing you in the same place every month. Great. Tell them and then ask them if they want to come. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you've got a yellow jacket with a clipboard. Uh, we're looking at their block of flats. Uh, so, regular prayer meetings um, for the community. So this is a great way of getting the rest of the church involved. Yeah, you know, this is the, the bacon sandwiches prayer breakfast scenario. Um, so prayer in uh, virtual spaces, and um, this is really interesting uh, to me. Uh, so um, there are virtual cathedrals online and virtual labyrinths and various things. Um, so rather, you know, if you've got people that can't get out and about or accessibility is an issue for people, um, there are kind of interactive ways to pray online, um, which might be helpful for people. Um, the, uh, for Thy Kingdom Come, a couple of years ago, I made an 11 metre wide labyrinth that we put outside Wells Cathedral. Um, I doubt it would fit in here, but you're more than welcome to borrow the labyrinth um, if that is helpful at any point. Um, 24-7, um, so 24-7 was a group that started in the UK and is now worldwide um, of people that said, why is the church not praying, let's do something about it. And basically they set up a system of people signing up to one or two hour slots for 24 hours for a week. Um, I think that has now around the world been going constantly for nearly 20 years. Um, which is amazing. You can see a map on their website uh, of who is praying when. 24-7 prayer was my, save, my personal saving grace when I was a teenager and didn't understand what was going on in church. Um, it was, you know, I found God in a 24-7 prayer room. Um, so they played a big part in my journey. Um, and they started boiler rooms when they realised that perhaps they were looking slightly inward. They set up boiler rooms, invited local homeless people in, um, and started, you know, being missional. Um, but prayer was the reason that they did that. Um, so prayer partners uh, or triplets, kind of age-old, um, getting people together with the purpose of praying. Um, I think the church has lost something about the rhythm of the church calendar and the seasons of the church calendar. And we can pray specifically uh, within those. And there's a lot of material to help us do that now. So I think, you know, lots of churches do a leg course or have do thy kingdom come or focus during Advent. But what are you doing with the rest of the year? You know, do, are, we, are we engaged with creation tide through September? Um, you know, there's lots of different seasons in the church. 
well, and in our communities too, actually, um, that we could be praying through. Um, so whole or half day, uh, or whole or half nights of prayer. Um, and then there's a note in here about prayer guards, which we've talked about a little bit. Um, everyone happy with that so far? Any questions on any of that? Very, very happy? Okay. Um, so another exercise for you. Um, how might you apply those principles and models to your own situation? Um, uh, I don't suggest you try and formulate an entire action plan for how you're going to pray for the next 10 years. Um, but what are some of the things that you can take out of that section of this evening that kind of excite you or you think might be opportunities uh, for you as a team or for the people that you're um, working with? And I'm, I'm going to suggest we take 10 minutes on this and you think about half of those as an individual what of that has resonated with you as an individual in terms of how you pray or would like to pray or might develop praying. Um, and then when that five minutes finished, um, I think you should probably try and have five minutes um, as a group on um, how you think you might move forward. But it strikes me that it's probably just laying examples onto the discussion you've already had, if that makes sense. Um, so let's take five, take five minutes by yourself, and then we'll take five minutes as we. So we've just got a few minutes uh, to kind of summarise um, before some kind of concluding remarks. Um, is there anything, is there any kind of particular burning issues that people want to throw out to the rest of the group? Just before we draw it all together. For me, it's a just, I suppose, a plea. And, and that is that we've most probably in our individual groups come up with an amazing plan of peace. Some of them might be similar, but we really do need to get together and identify what practically works for each and every one of us. And, and actually take increasing action in our prayer lives. Yeah. For sure. Together. So Together. Some <laughs> Together. Some of the stuff obviously we've covered, and quite a bit of it we've not even approached, we've not been able to get that sort of closeness. We, us here, have actually been looking at some ways of bringing that together. As Gary said earlier, there's ten, these ten churches involved, mm -hmm. people from ten churches, and as we said, often the people that come to the leadership team are busy people anyway. They're the ones that are willing to do things. And yeah. also involved everybody in their own fellowships and churches, you know, they can't necessarily get out on a, a Monday. And it's mm -hmm. difficult to get so we were on a Wednesday. <clears throat> so um, we've had a problem with that. And that's what we're addressing. We're just looking at some different ways of doing that now, actually, trying to in that case, is it possible for <coughs> us all to put them down into an email so we end up with this list of thoughts? Because if not, we'll attempt to adopt just one and not hear everyone. Or, or why don't we on another Wednesday to formulate a plan? Yay. Which was kind of the idea of why we did this every fortnight and every week. Is it get, would then give you an opportunity between each session, yeah. if you wanted to, to meet and talk about what we had talked about and how you implemented that into your own group. That's right. Yeah. That, that was when we originally set up the idea of doing it every week. That's right. Yeah. Well, this topic might be an idea that. There was a lot of kind of murmurings from this side of the room. <laughs> about, there was a lot of murmurings from this side of the room about <coughs> You know, deciding how dedicated you are to this. Um, I mean, without wanting to kind of trample all over your current church commitments, a practical suggestion, as far as I'm concerned, would be, you know, is there the opportunity for this group of people to be a midweek group? If you are going to prioritise developing something in your communities, do you need to step out of what you are already doing? I'll just put that out there as a as a challenge. 
Um, that is a challenge. To, yeah. That is a challenge. I realise that that is, yeah. you know, Absolutely. and actually, I guess there is um, there is a level of at what point do you have to stop having a foot in both camps mm. to really make it happen? And I say that from my experience in Durham. It is very, very difficult if you want to move something forwards. I mean, well, I was kind of lucky enough because it was one church, well, it was two churches, um, you know, volunteers, and I was being paid by the church to put it together. And that, that makes a difference, actually. Um, Another but, thought which you know, I did you've say... Got, you've got a deanery mission there, so... Which I mentioned to Gary and David a while ago, was actually to relook at your monthly breakfast and yeah. see about turning that into a prayer breakfast as opposed to having a speaker and come and talk to you kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So there are little windows that you could tinker with yeah. and change. And that's it's not, you know, yeah. trying to pile more and more and more onto mm -hmm. yourselves and yeah. your churches is not going to help. It, it's a change of focus, it's a change of emphasis, yeah. it's a change of what you choose to do with your yeah. time. Um, and the energy that you have for it. I think I've got a few ministers around as well if I try to do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, we're just face it, some people just got their finger in too many pies, haven't they? Yeah, well, that would be no. <laughs> but if you need, you know. If you spread yourself too thin, how effective can you be? Well, yeah, absolutely. But I think part of this process, you know, part of this course is to try and help you nail down. Yeah. Where to go? You yeah. know, if you only had a few sessions, um, you know, I, you know, you have a member of clergy with the specific job role of being missional, um, and if that member of clergy can't back you, um, probably nothing will happen. So use him within chapter. Um, I'm so just to draw this together, because we I'm, are. I'm, I'm glad to say that the the rector that looks after us has made it very very clear whatever decision we make mm. missionary she would just support whatever steps that are great and and that's a great release really yeah. um, because it are... is really hard to leave a community or to to yeah. to have your heart elsewhere yeah and that's you know those are things you will have to grapple with as a, as a group moving forwards. And there are other diocesan officers who may be useful to you, so Tina Hodgett, who's um, evangelism and pioneer team leader. Um, they all know Tina, Tina. She, she's, you know, Tina is just amazing. Um, she totally does have a foot in both camps, but she needs to. Uh, but what's brilliant about Tina is she you know, talks to both teams as it were she's an advocate for both um, and i think that's a real a real blessing um okay let's draw this together uh, so that you can go home um there are some business cards on your tables it is my job to support you in prayer in working some of this through so it's been a pleasure to be with you and work through this material today but my email address is there please use it it's my I have my job. Um, so, you know, I'm here to help you make this stuff happen. So, if you want someone to come and, you know, work through little changes you can make to what you're already doing, fine. I'm happy to come and talk to you on a different Wednesday about that. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, running 24 7 prayer spaces or how you do prayer with the community. That's totally my bag. So um, I've been, you know, doing prayer spaces for 25 years. Um, I know I don't act a day older than 15, but um, I've been doing doing creative prayer a long time. Um, so uh, and yeah, just off the back of some of the discussion this evening, if it would be helpful to you for me to come for a day and just model a whole bunch of different ways of praying to kind of make some of what you've talked about or what you've discussed kind of more tangible to you um, I'm more than happy to do that that would that would be a pleasure um, 
So if you want to, particularly if you want to call that a retreat of any sort, I can find you some money too. Um, <laughs> don't put that on the video. Um, <laughs> we, we, we have that down now. You you've got that there. <laughs> so um, when Abbey House um, closed in Glastonbury, there was a bunch of money left. Uh, so the diocese has been given that to support retreats, uh, but preferably on a dignitary level. So this would be perfect opportunity. Um, so that way you can buy lunch and you can buy lunch and go somewhere nice. Um, but anyway, so um, yeah, I'd be more than happy to come and do that. Um, the only other thing that's uh, on your handout is recommended reading. Um, they've got three books. I've got lists more that I can send you um, if, for whatever reason, you have any time in your lives to read. Um, so, Punk Monk, New Monasticism and the Ancient Art of Breathing. Uh, this is Pete Gregg and Andy Freeman who started 24-7 Prayer um, talking about, it's a few years old now actually, um, but talking about taking old spiritual practices, monastic practices, and kind of dragging them into the 21st century. Um, I work with Andy uh, at Greenbelt. He would say that he would like to update some of the material in that book now, um, but the publisher won't let him do it. Um, so yeah, it's 10 years old, take it as it is. Um, fresh and introduction to fresh expressions for church and pioneer ministry, slightly newer. Um, Michael Volland is now principal at um, Ripley in Cambridge. But uh, I knew him when he was doing pioneer teaching in Durham. Um, and there's some, there's some good stuff about prayer in that book too. Um, came from Rectory Road, um, Monastic Rhythms for Contemporary Living. Um, do, who know, do any of you know Ian Adams? Um, so he's a poet, but he takes his poetry and writes kind of devotionals around it and talks about spiritual practice around the poem that he writes. So, uh, Cave of Factory Road is one. He's also got another book called Running Over Rocks, um, which has kind of 40 spiritual practices, but it's very much about how you get prayer into the everyday. It's, you know, how do you pray when you're preparing dinner? How do you pray when you're, you know, the, the Running Over Rocks comes from a story of when he was a teenager and he found himself in prayer and um, jumping from rock to rock on a beach. Um, so there we go. Um, there are hundreds of websites and loads of really good books. Um, and if you want a list, I can I can put that together for you. But um, I think that's all I've got to share, given the time. Um, are there any kind of burning questions? Otherwise, do email. I'm only I'm half time in this job, so forgive me if it takes a few days to get back to you. But I will. Yeah, but I'm more than welcome to help you kind of continue, continue to develop this part of, of what the group does. So I want to ask a question. If we have a, a retreat day away to try and uh, crash out how we're going to go forward, will you be the um, <laughs> media? Well, I'm, yeah, more than happy to if, well, particularly if prayer is the focus of that. Yeah. That work, but oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, more than happy to do that. <laughs> yeah, she so you got away with it. The navigation for feedback for <laughs> good content, speaking of good content. What session is this? This is B05 Prayer for Mission. Is there three, there's three sets in there? Is there an A, B, and a C? Yeah. So they so you can so these are the uh, we did um one two the so this is the first course in the country where it's a bespoke course, so we're not running it from start to finish. Oh, okay. We're picking out the modules that we yeah. to the school. And it's, well, that's uh, what, which is why we need to do this sort of yeah. material. Which is why we ever said we're keen on getting these evaluation sheets back to see how it works. How it works, okay. Um, but yeah, well, they're very much moved away from the start to finish and making it really respectful. Well, 
don't tell me I think my slides are on my screen. Yeah, I mean, but that, that's why I sort of said we that to see how the code is we don't have a comment. He's a rule of the English and Oh, yeah. And he's really good. He's very good. He adapts it as much as you can get them. He missed stuff out. He did it so guys thank you very much for coming it's nice to see you all again um, we will be here again in two weeks time when I'll be talking to you about healthy relationships and quality communities um, so look forward to seeing you all there do you if you can, read through the notes for the session beforehand. Um, but as we've been saying, we won't cover it all. This is far too much. But if you pre-read it, then it means we can have a little bit more time for, for discussion rather than the kind of teaching aspect of it. Here, here. Yeah. I think, I think that's a bit that's missing. A bit what? A bit that's missing. And that is us sharing and... Um, Having conversations. Bringing, yeah. bringing things together so we can yeah. own call. But the more you read the material before the night, then the more we can do that. We know yeah. that's what you're doing. You won't have to give you so much.